Hello and welcome to International Day of the Midwife. This is our ninth year as Virtual International Day of the Midwife and it's 5th of May 2017. I'm very happy to welcome everyone to uh, this talk today on professional portfolios. Thank you for listening to this. I'd just like to acknowledge the University College Lullaby, Denmark and Association of Radical Midwives for their continued support of VIDM over the years. And because you're listening to this as a recording, we will click through these because we have our sound and it's very good. Uh, the record button is on. And I would like uh, to introduce, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Stephanie Curtis. Stephanie began pursuing her goal of becoming a practitioner in women's health in 2011. She graduated with her bachelor's degree in nursing from the University of Florida in the USA in 2013 and has spent her nursing career on the postpartum and labor and delivery units there. Currently, she is a Florida Gator once again at the University of Florida, aiming for a doctorate in nursing practice with certification as a nurse midwife. She also serves as the Women's Health Advisor for A Mother's Hope, a non-profit organization that focuses on equipping and empowering mothers for a healthy motherhood journey. Stephanie dreams of being part of a community which seeks to prioritize the support and betterment of women and their families through health education. She currently resides in Florida. I'm going to mute my microphone and Stephanie, you can take it away. And thank you for coming. I see we've got a participant, Rose, listening in. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Houston. So, creating a professional portfolio. I actually wasn't incredibly familiar with this topic, so it was good for me to put this presentation together for my own sake as well, because I'll probably start working on one of these pretty soon. So, what is a portfolio? It is not a resume. I wasn't sure what the difference was initially, but it really is more like a scrapbook, if you will, a compilation of your education and career background um, as it relates to midwifery. It's a tool to help you secure position. An employer might ask for this, or it might be something that you offer when you are seeking out a position. And it also is a record of your career. So it, it could be really helpful for you um, just to have knowledge of what you've done so far and areas where you need to improve to help you reflect, which we'll also talk about later on. So as concerning format, there's your hard copy. So this typically is presented as a three ring binder um, and then, you know, tabs and dividers to distinguish, you know, which sections are which so that you're nice and organized and it's easy for the employer to find information. Or you can create an e-portfolio, which is actually pretty cool. It looks a lot like a blog in the examples I've seen where there's a banner across the top, your picture and name with your credentials, and then there's links that connect to all the different sections of information. Uh, these two links give some really nice examples. Some of them are for kind of earlier, uh, fresh out of school nursing students, if you will, and then others are for a bit more of an advanced position. So you could kind of distinguish what yours needs to look like based on the level of professionalism. Stephanie, so um, you know you can move your slides yourself. So mm -hmm. if you look at the bottom, there's a little arrows. So if you want to move your own um, slides, that would be great. Do you see oh, the, the I... little arrows mm -hmm. at the bottom? I thought I was moving them. Do you see that? Okay, um, um, I wasn't seeing Maybe they were moving. I wasn't seeing them. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so documents. This probably isn't an exhaustive list, but there's quite a few things that you could include in your portfolio. And I forgot to mention the portfolio, there really isn't a right or wrong way in particular. There are some essential elements which we'll go over, but you really do have the freedom to be creative with this and present yourself in a way that's true to who you are and to your passions as a midwife. So this list 
um, a lot of this is pertinent to me uh, living in the United States. So I would, you know, definitely have my nursing license in there. Um, a CV or resume. So depending on the kind of position you're applying for, you may want a CV rather than a resume. The resume is a more succinct uh, version of your background in history, kind of the cliff notes to the portfolio, if you will. Uh, the CV, what's different about that, it's longer than the resume, but it goes more into depth with your academic achievements. So you'd include presentations and projects and more details about those things. Any required, you know, mandatory annual or biannual trainings that you have to have. Continuing, edu continuing education certificates, awards, list of your volunteer positions, professional organizations or committees you might be a part of. You can include samples of your work. So if you have submitted some papers, some abstracts, you've been published, uh, those are great things to include. And then any references or letters that you might have. So alternative media, I thought this was pretty neat because you can be creative with your portfolio. You can include other forms of information to portray what you've done. So this can include photos and videos. Obviously, the e-portfolio would be a better format for those. Um, audio as well, if you've spoken, like I'm doing right now, I guess I could include a link to this recording in my e-portfolio and even artwork. So I included this uh, belly cast over here because this might be something that you teach or you're involved in, you facilitate these types of classes for women, and this is great to include. It shows your passion for working hands-on with moms during pregnancy. So the essential elements. Personal info, your basic details, of course. You want to tell them who you are, how to contact you, um, and then an essay. So in the essay, you want to include your professional values and interests, and then also a plan for your development. So not only why do you want to work at this facility or for this employer, but what will that position do for you as well? Where are you in your goals? How will this job help you to meet those goals? Your qualifications. So with this being an international conference, I'm sure this differs um, pretty widely. But again, pertinent to the US, I want to have, um, well, I'll go in more into detail about what I need in the United States. But basically, <laughs> your degree or level of education, so any transcripts from universities or colleges you've been to, core competencies, which you may be able to find um, on your institution's website, and also any national requirements. And we'll talk more about those. So national requirements, your governing body. So for me, I have the American College or Association of Colleges of Nurses of Nurse Midwives. And there's also the Midwifery Certification Board. So the ACNM, that's a professional organization for me, but the AMCB they're the governing body as far as certification and qualification to be a midwife. So requirements that the AMCB has are pretty much fall into these three categories. Proof of licensure as an RN, since that's required to be a nurse midwife here. Completion of my degree from an accredited institution um, to become an advanced practice registered nurse and then verification and attestation by director of education program, which that typically takes the form of a letter from the director of your program. Uh, at least that's what I saw in my research. Competencies. So what can you do? The idea of full scope midwifery, in the States at least, is this long list of types of visits. So these, if you can do full scope midwifery, this is what would be expected of you. And obviously this will vary from facility to facility. You may not be doing much peri or postmenopausal care, wherever you end up working, or much primary care. You may be strictly doing antenatal, intranatal, and postnatal work. 
but it's important to include all of that depending on where you go because who knows when your practice might expand and they begin to do a little bit more work um, with you know peri or postmenopausal women so it's good to include if you've had any of that experience and then any procedures or skills that you might have so with the long-acting reversible contraception if you can place IUDs the uh, intrauterine device I don't know what everything is called in other countries so I'll explain all the acronyms um, if you can place next one on do colposcopy especially these skills that require additional training you want to market yourself because you know not every midwife can perform colposcopy or endometrial biopsy so it's a good way to um, kind of pique your employer's interest if you will breach delivery I added that because in the states it's a pretty rare thing but I know a medical uh, an obstetrician here where I work she practiced in Hawaii for a while and breech delivery was a pretty regular occurrence so that could be really valuable um, depending on where you're working uh, so you want to include any educational experience you've had if you've been an instructor you've taught any classes which classes were those areas of expertise so if you have a particular interest and have done continuing education and workshops related to informatics, um, complementary alternative medicine, water birth, any of that you want to include. If you've had any management positions, you've been a part of any political action committees or grassroots projects, and also if you have any experience in quality improvement. Here, um, a part of the doctoral nursing program at my institution, quality improvement is pretty huge. So any training that you've had in quality improvement in the states especially is pretty attractive right now. And Rose, uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have them. Up top, there's the little person with the hand up. You can use that person if you need to ask any questions, if you want the microphone, or you can um, just use the chat box. And welcome Kim as well. Where are you guys from? Oh, very cool. It looks like Kim is joining on her phone. <laughs> I'm not sure how how good that chat interface is on the phone. But good. Uh, welcome. So just talked about, um, yeah, that's right, and we're recording it. So, oh, hello, Kim. All right, so you're from this side of the pond as well. <laughs> I was thinking about moving to Atlanta. That's fun. Um, so we're just we're recording this, but we talked a little bit about some of the essential elements that you want in your portfolio. We're talking about core competencies, and these are just this is all information that you want to communicate to your future employer so that they know who you are and what you could do for their practice. So another one of those essential elements, and I found this really interesting, is reflection. So this quote, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards, especially um, with lots of talk about provider burnout. I've even read some articles about compassion fatigue. That's a thing. <laughs> I think employers and you know those in healthcare who are leaders in general are pretty interested in reflection and what you're doing as a provider and personally to help prevent some of that burnout. Um, and then also, like we said earlier, <laughs> yeah. yeah, wait a while and then reflect. <laughs> um, but just thinking about ways that you can continually, you know, assess your own progress and think about your own strengths and weaknesses so reflection so like I just said strengths and weaknesses areas where you know that you feel very confident um, and then areas where maybe you don't feel so confident and it's much better to enter into a new facility as a learner uh, rather than a know-it-all I experienced that 
personally, not, you know, myself, but working alongside a new midwife as a student who she kind of spoiled her new position by kind of being a know-it-all and not being very teachable. So really simple things, but really important to an employer that you're aware of your strengths and weaknesses and you're willing to learn. So areas for improvement, again, that goes along with that. Um, any impactful incidents or cases? So obviously, you want to stay away from something that maybe gets into um, like a lawsuit. <laughs> that might not be something you want to discuss openly, but um, a case in particular that was really important to you, where you really learned something, or that's kind of shaped your uh, view of midwifery, or that's affected your goals, what you want to do in the future, something like that. Again, just showing who you are, what you want to do, what you'll bring to the practice, and even your plans for continued reflection. That I found really interesting as well. So this practice of mindfulness, just simply being present in the moment, being aware of yourself and aware of what's going on around you. Um, if you do regularly practice meditation, yoga, or tai chi, your personal faith or religious community, not necessarily to go into detail with all of these things, but this is something you could mention in your essay or um, in this section on reflection if you wanted to write up a small essay too to show, again, that you are aware that burnout is possible and it's something that you're working to prevent and you're wanting to stay current and passionate about what you do. So some resources. I didn't find many textbooks um, to help with portfolio specifically in midwifery, but I did find this one with some colleagues from Australia as the authors. Um, it foc this one focuses particularly on e-portfolios, but other than the alternative media like videos and, and photos, it would probably be pretty easy to translate this to a hard copy as well. I think I will probably create an e-portfolio and a hard copy. Um, depending on who you work for, they may prefer to have the binder. And it was new online for about $30, so that's not bad. If you wanted something that would actually walk you through step by step um, and give you some more details about do's and don'ts and things like that. So I'm reading your question, Rose. What tips do you have regarding making sure you stay as focused on your goal as possible? The journey to becoming a midwife will be the hardest thing I have ever done. Yep, I feel the same way. <laughs> I feel the same way, especially this, my fall semester, I was definitely wondering, why did I do this? <laughs> Scheduling your life and sleep. Again, really simple things, but it's so easy to get caught up in self-sacrifice and no sleep and no eating and you know, filling out every piece of paperwork and crossing all your dots and, or crossing your T's <laughs> and dotting your I's and you kind of forget to take care of yourself. As, as far, um, I, I think, are you both students? Are these, are, are Rose and Kim both uh, student midwives? Oh my gosh, two hours. So Rose is in England. Yeah, so um, we've got, I don't know if I've got a copy of it at the university I work for now that we actually do a whole uh, a whole presentation on looking after yourself as a student because it's very important to eat. We don't want you to burn out before you have a chance to be a midwife. Right. So honestly, scheduling adequate sleep um, making sure that you're doing positive things like Stephanie said, not just drinking beer and crying into it, you know, thinking about yoga or an outside activity every day, doing something for yourself. Um, 
you know, and, and scheduling blocks uh, of when you can have uh, some me time is really important. And if you all want microphones, would you like to speak? If you've got a, a, a quick place where you can speak, because it's just the four of us, if you'd like to talk. It's just we'll need to mute our microphones in between times so we don't get tons of feedback. I'll give Rosa. Let me give Rosa a microphone. Is that okay? And I'll give Kim one. I'm not sure Kim might be on the phone. So there. So if you go to the top line there, um, there should be uh, a little microphone wizard. If you go in the uh, audio setup wizard, you should be able to do that. Or you can click in the microphone if you want to talk to. Oh, you can't really speak. Yeah, we don't want to crash your car. So, <laughs> but yeah, do type if you like. Annette Rose, if you want to talk, that would be great. And I'll be quiet so that Stephanie can continue. Okay, I unmuted my microphone. But if you decide to speak, uh, Rose, I'll mute mine again so you don't get any feedback. Um, but with sleep, one thing I learned uh, at my clinical rotation in the fall, it's tempting to stay awake uh, when you're on call with a patient who's laboring. But the midwife I was working with made me go to bed. <laughs> she said, you have to go to sleep because you just don't know, you know who's going to come through the door. Someone you know, has to get admitted and you know, you're awake again and you haven't had a chance to sleep. And the midwives I work with do 24-hour call. And most of the time during the day, especially if it's a weekday, they also have office hours in the morning throughout the day until about 4 o'clock. So to have a patient in labor and you've worked all day already and you're awake, you know, at the bedside all the time, we want to do that. But midwives, you like to be hands-on, but we're also not serving our patients well if we are fatigued and sleep deprived and we're also not serving ourselves well. So it's better to go and catch that nap. Exactly. <laughs> if only we could be robots and not require sleep. And then also, Rose, um, this isn't something I would necessarily include in a portfolio, but um, talking with other students or with your preceptors and asking them, you know, just open-ended questions. How do you think I handled this? Um, you know, asking them if they see if you have any bad habits, if you will. I know I had this habit of leaving a little bit too much space <laughs> in our prenatal visits. So we went long because I would just kind of let the person talk a long time and we all, we have 20 minutes for our appointments which was good but even her being able to say you know you don't necessarily have to let someone talk for 30 minutes to do a good prenatal visit that was good because I was able to reflect on that and that will prevent me down the line from you know going late and having to apologize to every patient and again it's just that self-sacrifice. I won't eat lunch because I've gone long and I don't want anybody to wait. So just having someone around you who's able to point those kinds of things out is really helpful. I didn't know the NHS was struggling. Yes, um, as a British and American midwife, Steph, uh, there's a lot of problems with funding and huge influx of uh, migrant women with multitudes of needs and understaffing. And there's huge, especially in England and Wales, there's, uh, there's very much upheaval uh, to do with uh, um, supervision and registration of uh, midwives uh, to do with the uh, the uh, 
the um, regulation board there. So it, it's it's um, there's actually a big action day today. One of our next speakers coming up, she's a feminist midwife in London. There's a big march in London today talking about women's rights. It's called Save the Midwife. So it's quite bad. Sorry to hear about your anxiety, Rose. And I would say that <coughs> it's not just um, it's not just uh, British uh, students. Um, but I also I see a lot of my American students struggling with anxiety because you have to work full time, you have to go to school full time, you have to be a partner full time, you maybe have some children full time, so you're pregnant full time, so it's it's a lot. So, all right, Kim, thanks for coming in. Um, that was really great. And if you want to listen again, we'll be putting the recording uh, uh, on our VIDM and probably on our Facebook page as well. So thank you. So Rose, are you going to the march, or is it gone? Is it finished now? Maybe Cause it's later on there. Oh, lovely, lovely. My nieces, my nieces are. 30 something so I guess they don't need too much looking after anymore so good for you I used to like it when they were small so when are you when do you um, finish and take your uh, board examinations Rose And I'm sure either of us is happy to share our emails if you want to have a support group. Um, we're happy to happy to chat any time. Um, I've been an educator. Um, well, I've been an educator really since I finished nursing school, which was in 30 years ago. How sad. Um, but very happy to talk and share any resources that you might think. Um, here's my email. And I don't know if um, Steph feels comfortable sharing here her email, but I'm happy to get emails from anyone that listens into the recording or um, wants to email me. Or if you'd love to email me, um, we can certainly help you with some resources. And uh, Stephanie is feeling your pain because she's had a lot of exams lately, so she understands where you you're at with your uh, with your education. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming, Rose and Kim, who was here shortly ago. And, and, and Stephanie, thank you so much for providing this excellent um, presentation here. I'm going to just um, finish the um, recording here, so I'm going to stop record.